Hey guys, welcome to another beautiful day at Unplugged Performance. Today we're going to be validating some suspension components on our new Model 3 Performance Highland. Today we're going to be specifically focusing on our dual rate lowering springs and then proceeding to our front and rear sway bars. And then from there we're actually going to be disconnecting the factory adaptive dampers to see how the car responds. First we're going to be validating our Model 3 Performance mild springs. Let's get started. Alright, before we get this car in a lift, we need to check our stock hub defender heights. All right, we're looking at about 15 and an eighth. Okay, in the rear, we are looking at 15 and 5 eighths hub defender. Going up. When we first took delivery of both of our Model 3 Highlands, we did a thorough walkthrough of the new suspension components as well as the new brake components. If you haven't seen that, go ahead and click the link above. All right, now let's pull this stock suspension and take a closer look. We're first gonna start by disassembling the lower suspension assembly and work our way to the tub. Okay. The cheek is moving on to the top cowling now so we can access the top bolts. All right, um, now we're gonna proceed to remove all of the top hardware so that we can drop the front of control arm assembly and the shock down outside of the fender well. Carefully, you don't wanna stretch this too much. You can disconnect the brake line. Gives us a lot more freedom to pull this shock out. Last thing you wanna do is tear a brake line. That's a safety issue right there. I'm gonna slide it out. Don't wanna damage any paint. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, now that we have the front assembly out of the car, we're gonna tear it apart so we can compare our dual rate lowering springs to these factory springs. Okay, let's get our spring compressor. Okay. Basically, just walk it right off like that. Nice. The top hat does look a little bit different. It does look like they uh, they ridged the inside of the rubber on the actual bushing between the uh, or around the metal plate itself. I don't know if that's going to help with overall structural rigidity or longevity, but it does look different than the original Model 3 Performance. Ooh, wait a second. This also spins. Interesting. Yeah, this was a, a fixed lower spring perch on the first generation Model 3. All right. See how this compares to our new springs. All right, guys, this is the uh, front spring comparison. We have the front, what is that? <laughs> the front passenger side out of the car now, as well as uh, one of our uh, dual rate lowering springs. This is our mild spec. Obviously, as you can tell, there are very few coils on this spring compared to the first generation Model 3 Performance. This is a dual rate spring, so the top portion of the spring essentially has a firmer spring rate anytime that you throw the car into corners, but the lower coils that are a lot closer together essentially offer a softer spring rate. And what that ensures is as you're doing normal driving and you're hitting small bumps and things of that nature, the spring is able to absorb them in a more efficient fashion than the stock springs. So let's go ahead and throw this back onto the original shock and uh, get this reassembled into the car. Okay. Okay, let's get this back onto the car and then we'll start with the rears. There we go. All right, we're gonna go ahead and disassemble the plastics as well as the hardware that essentially retain the lower spring arm so we can go ahead and get that rear spring in. Okay. Okay. This is definitely a skinnier spring than the first generation Model 3 Performance. But the overall diameters on the top and the bottom do look the same. Let's go ahead and get that new spring in the car. Before we do that, we have to essentially just transfer the accessories over, so let's do that now. Okay, let's see how these fit. Okay, so far so good. Let's try the other side. Okay. All right, let's get this on the car. 
Ooh, it's a little tighter. <laughs> Since the spring's a little wider, shouldn't be a problem though. Gotta get the right angle, there we go. Okay. Okay. So far so good. Let's put some pressure on there. Button up the other side and then we'll check heights. Okay, there's one. All right. Uh, yeah, I gotta lock it. And then uh, after that, we'll just knock out the other side. And then uh, we're good to go. Alrighty guys, we have our mild dual rate lowering springs on the car now. For those of you who measure in finger gaps, we're looking at about a two finger gap here. Um, but we did actually measure our hub to center and we're looking at about a half inch drop all around, which is exciting. It's a subtle drop here. It's gonna go ahead and essentially lower our center of gravity and give us a little bit better performance. Um, however, we are super excited to see just how low we can go and if we can actually get rid of that gap for those of us who are looking for that, for that slammed look. Um, let's go ahead and get started on that. We're gonna go ahead and remove these mild springs, get the car back up in the air, remove these mild springs, and then get those low springs on. All right, let's check out how low we got. Wow, yeah, that's definitely sitting lower. Nice drop, looks absolutely stunning. Alrighty guys, we just finished settling our low dual rate springs on our Model 3 Highland Performance, and it yielded about an inch and a half all the way around the car relative to stock. And on the mild springs, we looked at about a half inch drop, which was a lot more modest. Came out of a few different uh, driveways and as well as entered a few of them that were a little bit on the steep side. We didn't have any rubbing of the fender liners or of the underbody cladding or the lip itself. So this is actually a really, really ergonomic drop uh, and something that's very, very dailyable. Alrighty guys, now that we've finished validating our dual rate lowering springs, we're gonna proceed to test our front and rear sway bars. Let's get started. Dude. Not the way let's get started. I always do that, it's a bad default. First thing we're gonna do is remove all of the under panels so that we can go ahead and gain access to the sway bars, remove them, and then compare them. Cool, let's compare them to ours. In terms of the actual sway bar's thickness itself, they do look very similar. Our goal with the sway bars is to optimize and validate them. We'll be testing in two phases. First, testing on car today to see if the fitment from the first generation Model 3 carries over to the new generation Model 3. As well as in the coming weeks, we're gonna be testing the spring rate of the factory sway bars compared to ours and validating them through street and track driving. Right, we're gonna finish tightening this up and then we'll move on to the front. Ooh, look at that grease. All right. <clears throat> One more, okay. Got the stock bar out of the car. Let's go ahead and compare it. The first generation of Model 3 and Y, we actually carried over the OEM bracket with our provided bushings and we didn't provide a bracket like we did for the rear. However, on these, I'm curious how it's gonna fit. Um, let's go ahead and get these brackets off and test them on the bushings. So let's go ahead and get those bushings on the bar, get the bar in the car, and let's see how it fits. Alrighty guys, let's see if this bar fits. Okay, looking good there. Let's see if we can get these end links to help us out a little bit. Cool, one side. We'll go ahead and finish tightening this up and then take it for a rip. We will be measuring the spring rates of the factory bars and in the coming weeks, as we test and validate the product on both the street and the track, we'll actually see if we need to make any changes to optimize our unplugged performance sway bars for this new Model 3 Performance Highland. But until then, now that we have our front and rear sway bars as well as our dual rate lowering springs, we're gonna go ahead and throw these under panels back on, throw the wheels back on and take it for a test drive. Now that we've learned as much as we have about the lowering spring height validation as well as the anti-roll bars or sway bars, as we like to call them. We're gonna go ahead and throw this in the air and actually unplug all four connectors and see how the car responds. Alrighty guys, let's get this thing up in the air and put the unplugged and unplugged performance. Alrighty Bryce, before we unplug it, what do you think is gonna happen? It's gonna throw a code. 
What kind of code? <laughs> yeah, probably. That's a good point. Uh, do you think it's going to let us go into track mode? My money is maybe. <laughs> I'm really curious to see. The intention behind this is so that we can figure out whether or not we can actually bring the car into track mode while we have coilovers on the car as opposed to the stock suspension. All right, now this car is all unplugged. Let's go ahead and get it on the ground and see what happens. We have all four corners unplugged. Let's go ahead and step on this brake pedal and see if this car has any errors to throw. Oh, adaptive ride control unavailable. Let's go ahead and learn more. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Okay, here it is. Adaptive ride control unavailable. Vehicle speed may be limited. Proceed with caution. The speed of your vehicle is limited to 90 miles an hour due to an issue with the adaptive suspension damping system. Now I'm curious, if you go ahead and go to the actual vehicle dynamics themselves, yeah, it does look like track mode is currently grayed out. Interesting. Now, I don't know if it's necessarily gonna stay this way. It looks like you may have some access to customization options. No, most of those are pretty much grayed out as well. Interesting. So it looks like the overall vehicle dynamics themselves are somewhat limited. Um, ride and handling, I'm, I'm assuming these would not essentially be active because the solenoid is essentially disconnected, so. Hypothetically, the car is giving the instructions to those shocks, but the shocks are not plugged in, so they're not exactly gonna be doing very much. Um, regardless, I'm really excited to throw some coilovers on this car at some point. We did plug all the shocks back in and all of the error codes did clear as soon as we hit the brake pedal for the presence test on the car. So she's good to go. No sort of recalibration on those solenoids, which is really, really awesome. Um, anytime that you do remove those shocks, it's gonna essentially be a pretty efficient process in that regard. Um, with today's findings, Basically, we validated our lowering springs in both mild as well as the low spec, as well as our sway bars. They felt amazing and they look even better. Super stoked to continue modifying this car with you guys. Stay tuned over the next coming weeks as we continue to modify the living heck out of this car and take it to the track in the near future. If you have any questions or comments or if there's anything that you guys want to see us validate or test onto this car, go ahead and let us know in the comments below. Until then, see you in the next video.